In today's episode of Tool Demos, we'll be pulling the engine out of this Toyota Corolla. If you remember from a previous episode, we pulled that transmission out because internally it had a lot of damage and I just wanted to replace that with a used unit. So I looked online, LKQ and different salvage yards here in town wanted between $1,100 and $1,400 for their used transmissions. It's totally not going to fly. So I went to IAA to see if I could buy a Corolla as a donor car. They had a few up for auction, but they were all automatics. So I kept looking and I found a Toyota Matrix XRS with a manual transmission and I couldn't pass that up. Now, if you know what an XRS is, it's the same 1.8 liter engine, but it revs higher, has more horsepower, and it's got a six speed manual. So I decided why not? I bought that sight unseen after taxes and fees and everything was right at $600. So less than half price uh, of the used transmission. So that's gonna be coming on Monday. Today's Saturday, so I'll be spending today just getting this car ready for that powertrain swap. Hopefully everything will work out and I'll bring you along and show you what happens. So let's get started. So first I'm gonna get rid of all the fluids. I'm gonna take out the refrigerant while that's coming out. I'm gonna do the coolant, oil, power steering, and so on. Just got a bucket, I'm gonna do the coolant. Take the same one off of the engine. <laughs> All right, it looks like the recovery's done on the AC. It recovered 0.13 pounds, so I don't think the AC worked on this car. We'll get that unhooked. All right, while the coolant's still kind of peeing out, we're gonna do the oil. I'll leave the filter on, but we'll drain the oil. So the radiator is mostly empty. Now I can just get it out of here. It'll get this out of the way. So this is a plastic trim clip remover from Dent Fix. And you can see that it's got this angled pry bar like design, but it also has really sharp jaws to get around the back of that trim clip and I can pull it out of there. It works similar to a panel clip remover of this style here, more like a pry bar, but I like these better because I can get back there and grip it, <laughs> grip it and rip it without breaking it. Uh, a lot of times on older trim clips, one like this will break the ears off of that uh, clip. This will have a better chance at not breaking it. There you go. You can see no, no damage to the trim clip other than just it being old here, but the tool didn't damage it at all so this might be uh, reusable all right it's just got that one fan connector so this whole assembly should be able to pull out and i can set it over in the parts pile got pretty good access to these ac lines so i'll pull these off That sound you heard was air rushing into the compressor because it was under a slight vacuum because I recovered all the refrigerant out. One thing I like to do is just cap these holes. 
uh, this is a usable engine and I don't want anything getting down into this compressor. I also want to put a plug here in these lines so that they can be reused also. <laughs> kind of went flying, just got that plastic protective cover. <laughs> this is that plastic cover. It just covers this stud. Now I can pull this cable off. That little guy is a bit sticky, so I'm going to use this tool from Calvan. It just pinches so I can grab onto that connector and pull it off without breaking it. It's just going to push that down, releasing it, and I can just kind of wiggle it off. Makes things a lot easier, especially when you just cut your fingernails. <laughs> I cut mine too short, and it's, uh, it's a little tender. This makes the job a lot easier. So if you look just there, under the intake, you can see that's the crank sensor connector. And really, really hard to see back there. It's not focusing, but where my light is shining, that little guy right there, that's the knock sensor. So I'm gonna disconnect those two. That was the O2 sensor. That should be the last connector. Famous last words. Now I've got this mount right here. That's it. The rest of the harness should come off. And I did speak too soon. Down here is the power steering pressure switch. It's that last connector down there. But everything else is off. fuel line first this safety has to come off it's just a clip that goes over the connection That's a pretty special tool. This is an AST release tool. It's part number 8023. You can see it's got that long uh, stepped nose to it. It fits around this fitting here and then into the fuel line. And then this, it's kind of a neat tool. It's just, this is a fuel line disconnect pair of pliers and it just pushes that disconnector into the hose and makes it easier on me. I don't have to screw around with it. It's got a lot of leverage and it gets it up real easy. This is the AST set that that disconnect comes in. It's part number 8110. It's got uh, 10 pieces in there. <laughs> 10 pieces isn't enough. It's what I've got. Uh, but if you're working on all sorts of cars, you need as many of these as you can find. All right, I've got the harness up here. I'm going to use this bungee cord just to get this out of the way. I have the bungee cord wrapped around the hinge for the hood. All right, I've got the fuel hose wrapped around it. All of the electrical is up and out of the way here. So we just need to disconnect the power steering lines over here and the exhaust uh, and the motor mount. We should be able to get everything out of here. This is the power steering pump. Earlier I evacuated the reservoir so it won't leak as much, but it's still going to shoot some fluid out of this hose here. You put the pliers in the right direction. Whoa! 
watch as Steve attempts to break loose an exhaust flange bolt with a 12 inch extension and a swivel on a 3 8 drive nano. So I'm using a impact swivel socket and I've got this locking extension which I like when I'm using a swivel like this because they can get off balance and uh, throw that socket off but with this you got to have that unlocked before it'll come out <laughs> if you line up the hole there you go All right, I've got the weight of the engine supported on the hoist. And the only things holding that in are those two bolts on the motor mount. So I'm going to remove those and I'm just going to bring the whole mount out with the engine. Should be easiest that way. These are the same 14 millimeters as down there on the exhaust. There she goes. Looks like that chain's holding on pretty good. And if I can just miss that hood, I'll be in good shape. And we're free of that wiring harness there. So that's Wow, this is a real squeaker. Yeah. Got some drama in the shop today. <laughs> well, that was easy. Yeah, easier than I thought. Yeah, you didn't think uh, the engine would come out so easy, would you? Yeah, good thing it's a light one. It is a light engine. It's a lot smaller than the Thunder engine. Yes. I'm gonna swing the hoist sideways mm -hmm. so I can clear the car. And then we'll lower the engine because swinging it around up in the air like this is not my idea of a fun time. Yep. There we go. There we go. If you haven't seen this before, check it out. I found this knob from a seller on eBay. He actually mills these at home and they're perfect. They fit right on these Harbor Freight jacks and so you don't have to use the jack handle to open and close the valve. You can just grab it and give it a twist. And there we go. So I think I'll let this engine simmer on the bench for a while as I eagerly await the arrival of that Toyota Matrix. Until next time, thanks for watching. To stay up to date on future videos just like this one, click here and click over here to start binge watching tool demos. I won't judge.